Good morning, everybody. Great to have you with us this morning at Church Online. Hey, I want to read this morning from Matthew chapter 6, starting verse 1. And this is Jesus speaking here, and he says this. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. Verse 5. When you pray, you are not to be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your inner room and close the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they'll be heard for their many words. So do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And uh, but when but if you do not forgive others, then your father will not forgive your transgressions. Whenever you fast, do not put on a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they neglect their appearance so that they will be noticed by men when they are fasting. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that your fasting will not be noticed by men. But your Father in heaven, who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. You know, this month as a church, we are all praying and uh, fasting, if we uh, can, uh, for our community and for our nation and for the church of God to really grow and to expand. And prayer is one of those areas where I, I think we can really struggle with. I know in the past I've really struggled with prayer. Uh, maybe we just... We're just not sure how to pray. Maybe we are concerned that God's not listening or doesn't hear my prayers. Or maybe we're not sure what we should say or what we shouldn't say. Maybe it feels like sometimes nothing happens when we pray. And, you know, we wonder, is God actually listening to me? Is he actually hearing my prayers? Do my prayers really make a difference in the outcome of situations and things? How long should I pray for? Do I have to pray in a certain way or use certain words for God to answer my prayers? That may seem like silly questions, but I think we can have those questions in our heart because prayer is sometimes a little bit of a difficult thing and no one really talks about it. So you may have questions, though, some of those questions about prayer, you may have other questions about prayer that no one's really ever answered for you. And so I'm hoping over this month as we bring these messages on prayer that we can answer many of your questions about that. Uh, and I'm hoping that you will find uh, new power and uh, an anointing in your prayers where you can really know that your prayers are making a difference, that your prayers are getting through. And before I go any further, I just want to really encourage you, if you haven't already got to a life group, you need to get along to a life group because there's no greater place for us to come and to learn and to be encouraged by others, but also to have some of these questions answered. And you may have questions about prayer that we, we don't cover in the messages. And life group is a great place that you can go and ask some other people, hey, what do you think about this? I'd really like to understand. And also to get prayer for your needs and for other, other areas. So I, I'm talking about prayer today from a personal perspective because I believe prayer is personal. It's very personal. Prayer is simply talking to God. It, it's really about having a conversation with our Creator and um, in an intimate and personal way. And I think the best way to think of it is that really prayer is about our heart reaching out to God's heart, our, our desires being brought to God and, and talking to Him about it. And here in the scripture in Matthew 6, Jesus is teaching the people not just how to pray, but the right attitude to pray in. Because that he, he obviously feels that this is really important. Now, if you remember, in, the, in this time where Jesus is talking about, this is a, in, in the culture of the day, um, 
being religious and being connected to God and, 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 and Jewish culture is at the height of society. And so, you know, if you look more spiritual, if you're doing things that sound like you're connected with God, then you have a higher standing in society. And so people were making a big thing about uh, looking like they had this amazing relationship with God by praying on the streets. I mean, I, I think if you started praying in the streets in Invercargill, you'd probably get arrested. But... Uh, they make this big thing about praying in public and everybody uh, seen and, and wailing out to God in these big long prayers with uh, you know, great articulation and scriptural references put out there to make themselves look really close to God and really spiritual. So people will kind of elevate and say, wow, isn't that person so close to God? And so Jesus is addressing this and he's saying, hey, look, um, Prayer isn't about that because it's got nothing to do with other people. Prayer is about you connecting with your Father in heaven. And it's not something that is about you trying to make yourself look better. It's about you having a conversation with God. These people were not praying out their hearts to God. They were praying for attention and adoration by other people. Totally the wrong uh, attitude. And so... Jesus says for this reason, don't make a big public issue about this. In fact, go away privately. And also when you fast, make sure nobody else knows that you're fasting. Do it between you and God. That's this intimacy between you and God because prayer is personal. It's you talking directly to God from your heart. So one of the things uh, I've, I've come to see all the way through the Bible is that the great men and women of, of God throughout the Bible... Um, you know, they did amazing things. They saw amazing things happen for his kingdom. But over and over again, what you really can tell from all these people is that they have their own personal relationship with God. They have an intimacy with God. They have the ability to pray and hear from God and to have answers to prayer. And so it's this con personal connection through prayer that really seems to set them apart above all the other things in their life. They're not bound by religious form or function. They're not uh, uh, constricted by cultural expectations. They uh, had an intimate and personal relationship with the Creator. And it came from their very own heart desire to know their God and to have God know them. And, and so the basis for these kind of relationships always comes back to prayer. Because you can't know someone unless you talk to them. And that's basically what prayer is. You know, you can't have a relationship with somebody else without having a good conversation, without being having a good conversation with them. And unless you can talk to them, you really can't build a relationship. We can't really have a relationship with God. We can't really have a relationship with our Savior Jesus unless we pray and talk to Him. And there's a song by Maverick City called "Talking to Jesus," uh, which I really uh, like. And uh, the gist of the song is basically. You know, the one key thing to life to sort out all your problems in life is to learn to talk to Jesus, is to learn to pray and to come close to him. And yet so often we neglect prayer. We put it aside. It doesn't become the number one focus of our faith. It doesn't become the number one focus of our day or our week even. It kind of tends to be put off to the side. Many years ago, we had the privilege, uh, before, well, long before I was pastor, of having this amazing um, prophetess called Violet Kitely. She's passed away, but now, but but she was in here in the church, uh, prophesying and uh, just incredible power of God and every word that she had just really hit you in your spirit. And one of the team um, had managed to go to lunch with with her, and they just mentioned how all the way through lunch, quietly in the background, she was constantly praying. And it was like she, she obviously understood for the ability for her gift and her calling to be as sharp as it needed to be. She had to constantly be praying. She constantly needed to be talking to Jesus. She constantly needed to have that connection. And so I'm hoping that over this next month that you can actually grow in your, in your walk with God, that you can grow in your prayer life with God. You can get this intimacy with him that maybe you've been struggling with and maybe you've been finding it a little bit difficult to get breakthrough in. And so I'm hoping today, even in this message, that you will find some, uh, some gems, some uh, uh, equipping in your life so that you can go, yeah, I'm going to take this. And I really want to encourage you to get into prayer in a greater way. So I've got some keys to getting your prayer life going in the right direction today. So the number one uh, thing is uh, 
pray in the way that Jesus taught. And Jesus said here at the beginning of um, the, what we call the Lord's Prayer, he said, pray then in this way. He's talking about that, and I, uh, I bought this message for the life groups this week, and so um, I'm just going to very quickly summarize it because hopefully you've been to life work and talked about this, but it says in Matthew 6, 9, pray then in this way. And so what he's saying here is that there is a correct way or an attitude that is effective in prayer. In fact, I think it's really important that prayer comes from the right motive, and it comes from the right attitude of heart, that we are positioned, I guess, in who we are when we come before God in the right way. Uh, I, I don't think you can pray wrong things, but I definitely think you can pray with a wrong attitude. And, and so Jesus here addresses the attitude of the people when they come to pray rather than the words that they're praying. And so if you read through the Lord's Prayer, you'll see these uh, seven things uh, that I, I talked about with the life groups. I'm just going to really quickly list them here. It says, uh, number one, acknowledge God's sovereignty, his authority, and his power. Number two, worship him first. And number three, agree in your heart with his authority and his way of doing things. In other words, align your attitude in subjection with him. And, and notice that the first three things that he says here in your prayer should all be up to God. It's nothing yet about you. It's all about honoring God. Number four, then ask for your needs. Number five, ask for forgiveness and forgive other people in your hearts. Uh, I said to our group this week, you know, um, that's kind of like clearing the decks out of my heart. Any, anything, if I've got any issues this week or today that I've harbored against somebody else, Lord, I forgive them. I let that go. Number six, ask for his protection and rest in his power. And then finally, end with giving glory to God for his goodness and ability to do all that he has promised that he will do for you and in you. And if you notice here that Jesus is saying that most of our prayer life is actually about honoring God for who he is rather than asking for our own stuff. And, and that's where our prayer really needs to get connected and, and connected with an attitude in our life that my life is actually about honoring God in who I am. And when I pray, I'm going to honor God with my prayer. I'm going to lift him up. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to give him all the glory that he uh, needs. So the first thing is we need to pray in the way that Jesus taught us. Number two, we need to position ourselves correctly in our prayer. Um, I, I want to put this a little bit differently. I think the, the number one thing that we have to, to come to God with is humility and that's kind of a position that we have to take um, you know James 4 6 says but he gives greater grace therefore he says God is opposed to the proud but he gives grace to the humble Psalm 10 17 says O Lord you have heard the desire of the humble you will strengthen strengthen their heart you will incline your ear we need to remember that that when we pray to God we're praying to the Lord of all we're praying to the creator of the universe we need to remember who God is when we're praying he's almighty he's all-powerful he's righteous he's holy and he's true and whilst uh, we can develop an honest and personal relationship with the creator and, and our God we have to make sure that we don't become uh, familiar with him or over familiar with him or, or or treat him with disrespect in the way that we pray you know, we never get to tell God what he has to do for us. And one of the things that really disturbs me is when I, when I hear of people who have been praying, like demanding of God that God keep his promises, demanding of God that he do this, demanding of God that he does this, that, and the next thing. Honestly, we have no right to demand anything of God. We are saved by grace, not by our own righteousness. And when we pray, we need to come with the right attitude, position, and humility. God, I'm nothing, but I worship you. You are the creator. You are amazing. You are all powerful. I acknowledge all of that. And I come before you humbly and say, Lord, will you help me? Will you meet my needs? Will you, Lord, hear my heart? And, and you know, I... I can maybe put it in a, in, a, in a way that we can understand. If you're a parent, you'll understand this principle. You know, if you, 
If your teenager has an expectation, as teenagers tend to, that you'll just drop everything at their demand and drive them to their uh, meeting or drive them to their appointment or their sports game or their social event or whatever, you know, or, or that they just have an expectation that your wallet is always open and the money is always available for them to spend on whatever they desire whenever they want to do, um, you know. <laughs> And that their refusal to, to come along to a family gathering or even come along to church is an option that they have the right to take. You'll understand how frustrating that is as a parent because you're thinking, hey, I'm the parent, you're the child, you don't get to demand those things of me. So often our prayers are like that to God. And I wonder whether God uh, listens to us and thinks, oh, come on, you know, like, why are you talking to me like this? Why are you praying to me like this? Rather, how much better is it when our when our children, if you're a parent, when our children come to us and say, "Hey, I have this need, and is there any possibility you could help me?" And as a father, as a parent, you'll go, if it's a real need, you'll go, "Hey, I'm more than happy to help. I really want to help you." Uh, if it's something they don't need, you'll go, "Hey, I hear what you're saying, but I don't think that's the best thing for you." Now, when we take that position in prayer with God, I think it's a major step forward in getting breakthrough in prayer and major step forward so we need to position ourselves in humility and, and I believe that when we do you'll see God draw closer to you in everything number three be honest with God come humbly to the Lord doesn't mean you don't get honest with him uh, I used to think that when I prayed uh, you know that I had to pray very righteously I had to pray for the right things I'd pray for this and this and this to happen I'd, I'd pray for forgiveness I'd pray for these things uh, it's kind of like uh, you'd go through a list of all the things that you needed to pray for I mean my parents taught me how to pray when I was little and they had these things that I had to pray for or should pray for and so I'd do these things and I, I never really felt like I could bring how I was feeling to God how I was actually what was happening on the inside of me what I was struggling with or, or what was going on. And, but one of my biggest breakthroughs in this whole area of prayer was when I realized that I can be totally honest with God in my prayer. I, I, can, I can say to him, Lord, I'm struggling with sin at the moment. Lord, I'm struggling in this area of my life at the moment. I, I feel so hopeless with it. I, I, Lord, I'm hurting. I'm hurting about the situation. Uh, Lord, I'm angry and I'm disappointed that such and such didn't happen. Or maybe, God, I'm disappointed in you because... You know, I was hoping that you'd break through. I was hoping you'd bring me this. And it hasn't happened. And I'm so disappointed and feel crushed in my spirit. Maybe I'm feeling confused and feeling lost at the moment. God actually wants to hear what's going on in our heart. And I think that unless we actually open up to the Lord about how we're actually feeling, what really matters in our heart, he can't deal with the root of those issues. And he can't even speak to those issues because we're kind of hiding them from him. We need to be open with him about and be honest with him about how we're actually feeling. Um, I say to people when they come for counsel with me, um, I basically say, look, I can only talk into what you give me permission to talk into about. And I think the same thing applies with God. If we're not open and honest about what's going on in our life, he can't actually speak into it because we're really not giving him permission to. I love this. The fact that when King David was struggling, he poured it out all in the Psalms and and he was really raw and honest with God. And I want to read Psalm 13 uh, to you. It's, it's a really interesting Psalm to be in the Bible. Here is Psalm 13 verse 1. It says, and this is David, King David saying here, he said, how long, O Lord? <laughs> Imagine, have you ever started a prayer like that? How long, O Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart all day? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I've overcome him. And my adversaries will rejoice when I am shaken. This is a pretty raw prayer to God. This is like, I'm struggling with my relationship with you, God. I really am. And, I, you know, this is, this is the kind of thing that I think we shield from God. We think, oh, I can't pray like this, but actually God wants to know. Our heart here in the Bible is an example of this kind of prayer where he's crying out. And, it, and it's, it's the kind of raw honesty that I think gets breakthrough in our own lives. 
But it's not that David's being disrespectful. It's not that he's dishonoring to God. It's just that he's being real about the situation he's in at the moment and he's bringing the reality of his concerns and his fears and his worries and everything to God and even his concerns that it feels like God's not listening to him. He's bringing it to God. And yet he finishes this with this. In verse 5, he says, goes on after just saying this, he says, but I have trusted in your loving kindness. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. He is real about how he's feeling right now, but he's also not forgetting how amazing God has been in the past. He's not denying how he's feeling, but he is actually reminding himself that, you know, in the past, God has actually come through for me. I'm not going to forget that I'm saved. I'm not going to forget that he has really delivered me before. I'm not going to forget how much he loves me. But God, at the moment, even though I remember all those things, I feel terrible. I'm struggling right now. I think when we get honest with God, I know from me, when I've kind of gone through those times when I've kind of cried out to God and be honest with him, it's in those times when he is able to actually bring his peace to bear in my heart and to actually remind me, Graham, I hear you cry, but you know I am in control. Just trust me, it'll be okay. And until we actually are honest with God, it's really hard for him to speak those things into our life. Number four, don't do all the talking. You know, prayer is a conversation with God. And if you've ever been in a conversation where somebody never lets you in on the conversation, you realize this isn't a conversation, this is a lecture. And so often in our prayers, that's what we do to God. We lecture God on what he should be doing for us right now, rather than stopping and listening and uh, hearing what he has to say for us. In fact, in truth, I would probably say that that we should be listening more to God than we're talking to him about what we need. We should be hearing from him. So the question that many people have is, well, how do I know when God is speaking to me? And to be honest, that the answer to that question is a whole other message in itself, and I'm not going to go into that today. But in general, I would say he speaks to our spirit more than he does to our head. Um, and for me, I would say that I know when God is speaking to me because there's a peace that comes into my heart with what he's saying. Even though my head might be going, yeah, but I can't see how that's all going to work out. In my spirit, there's this, there's this peace. It's like the words of God just sit and reside and speak there and there's a calm about it, even if my mind is actually running a million miles around. I, I might be doubting in my head what's going to happen but in my spirit I feel a peace and and I also want to say that you know sometimes you've actually really just got to step out in faith on what you feel is this God speaking to me I need to step out in faith and test it and if you find it's true which often it is you'll realize hey that was God speaking to me and next time it's much easier to hear from him so we need to learn to listen in the days that we're in at the moment with everything being uh, turned up uh, 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 the norms being changed that life isn't how it used to be I think today more than ever than before we need to be hearing the word of God hearing what he's saying to us and, and following his direction number five always give him honor and praise for what he has done a prayer should always be honoring to God we should always be praising him now, one of the things that sticks out to me in the Psalms is that even when uh, it, it felt like with David that he was going through the worst of it, he always would praise God for what he had done. He would always remind himself and stir himself up of the goodness of God. Um, you know, there's always going to be something pressing in our lives right now. There's always going to be an issue that's on our minds right now. And that can become so so large in our thinking. That can be a mountain that we find hard to overcome. We honestly, we have to remind ourselves. But you know what? God was there for me yesterday. He was there for me last year when we went that, through that struggle. He was He He was there. I can remember how, how what it was like when I got saved. I can remember what it was like when my sins were forgiven me. I can remember what it was like when I had that, that moment in worship I can remember the goodness of God even though I'm not feeling like it now I'm going to praise you God for the good things that you've done I'm going to remind myself and force myself to remember that you are always with me even though it may not feel like it and you know you might be dealing with things in your life right now um, and feeling like you know is God actually there well he is there and he does have an answer for you in it and um, you need to understand that as good as it was maybe in the past, it's going to be again and maybe even far better. Uh, prayer is so 
so so important in our lives um, because if we if we move away from prayer we will move away from our relationship with God and so in everything that we do we need to stay connected with God in prayer and and prayer should never be a boring task that seems unfruitful uh, you know and I want to encourage you that to press through in your prayer life and to to really make it an effort to pray this month and to seek God this month and to and to desire to hear from him and really keep going until you do um I think there's no greater comfort in time of trouble. There's no greater reassurance in, in when you're not sure what to do than coming to the Lord in prayer and having his peace come upon you. I think one of the, 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 the greatest problems that we have for prayer is we feel like God's not answering my prayers um, as I would like him to do. But we need to appreciate that God knows more than we do. He is he sees the future when we can't. He, he knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows how it's going to pan out for us tomorrow. And we can rest assured in him. And if we are praying and seeking him, uh, we can put our faith and our trust that he will lead us into a place where tomorrow will be better than today, that our future will be assured in him. Proverbs 8, 17, he says, I love those who love me and those who diligently seek me will find me. In Job 5.8, but as for me, I would seek God and I would place my cause before God who does great and unsearchable things, wonders without number. Listen, it's time for us to be praying. I hope these points have helped you today to get a bit of a, a grasp on, on how to structure prayer and how to get breakthrough in prayer. But look, we need to be praying. Uh, prayer is a foundation for everything else we do. And unless we have that intimate relationship with God and it's growing and getting stronger, we're going to really struggle to find the peace and the hope we need for the days ahead. I want to pray with you right now as we end this message uh, that you will get breakthrough in prayer, that you will come into a more intimate place in your prayer life with God. Uh, so how about wherever you are right now, just close your eyes, bow your head, open your hearts up to God to receive from Him this morning. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can talk with you. You're not a distant God. You're not some idol on a hill uh, that, that people worship from afar. But Lord, you are close. You, are, you dwell within us by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we can always talk with you. We can always uh, hear your voice if we're willing to listen. And Lord God, I pray for every single person, no matter who they are and where they're at, Lord, I pray that our prayer lives would grow deeper in you. Lord, that we would have the ability to, to have breakthrough in our prayer life. Lord, that we would have a peace uh, in our spirit when we pray. Lord, that there'd be an excitement in our hearts when we pray. Lord, that this is not some drudgery, some not boring thing that we have, feel like we have to do. But Lord, that our prayer life would become alive and exciting and fulfilling. Uh, and Lord God, I just pray your anointing on every single person right now that they would know your hand upon them. Amen. Hey, if you're watching this and you're not a Christian, you haven't given your life to Jesus, I want to encourage you, you know, God hears your prayers too. And sometimes people think, oh, you know, why, why would God listen to me? You know, all the way through the Bible, even when people are a long way from God, when they cry out to God, he hears their voice. And you may not know Jesus as your Savior yet, but I want to promise you this, that if you cry out to Jesus right now, he will hear and he will respond to you. Becoming a Christian is not joining a club. It's not ticking a religious box. It's having a personal relationship with a living God, with our living God, the one and only God. And if that's you today, I just want to encourage you to say this quick prayer from your heart it's not so much about the words as i said before it's about the attitude of your heart if your heart is willing to receive him he will come in he'll forgive you of your sins he'll set you free and he'll turn your life around to begin a new life in his peace and his goodness if that's you today i just would encourage you to say this prayer in your heart with me dear lord jesus right now i ask you to come into my heart and set me free from my sin forgive me for all the things that i've done that are wrong and Lord, fill my heart with your love. Today, I choose to follow after you with my life.
from this day on. Lord, let me know your presence and let me walk in your future. In Jesus' name, amen. I mean, if you've made that decision today, I really want to encourage you, connect with us. We have a lot of information that we'd like to help you with to learn uh, more about Jesus and to build your relationship. We really want to connect with you personally as well. God bless you. Have a fantastic uh, Sunday. Look forward to seeing you tonight. Well, another awesome message this morning, and I just want to encourage each and every one of you to continue to be praying. Our prayers are personal. It's about building that relationship. Uh, remember this week, prayer and fasting, let it be the forefront of your heart and your mind. Let's do this together as a family. Stay, stay blessed, stay well. Stay happy and tune in tonight, 7 p.m. God bless you.